With Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 set to end the Guardians trilogy, here is a recap of the important MCU history surrounding the titular team. As Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is set to culminate the Guardians series, here is every important story, character, and team detail that could be crucial to the story of the titular team's fourth mainline MCU outing. The Guardians' first appearance in the MCU in 2014 as a ragtag group of outlaws who banded together to save the galaxy from the threat of Ronin. Since then, the team has become the second most popular MCU team besides the Avengers, with each character having a broad story told between their introductions and Guardians Volume 3. From the mainline Guardian sequel of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 to the Marvel Studios special presentation of the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, the team has evolved since 2014. Aside from these MCU entries, however, the Guardians have played roles in other projects, like Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, and Thor Love and Thunder, with Disney's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 ending this current iteration of the team, here is a definitive recap of their MCU journey since their inclusion in Marvel Studios' sprawling cosmic universe. Before we dive in any deeper, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more similar content. Let's dive in. 1. Drax's family was killed by Ronan An important plot point revolving around Drax is that his family was murdered by Ronan. Prior to the events of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, Drax's family was killed by Ronan as a means of finding the Power Stone for Thanos. This fueled Drax to get revenge against Ronan, something he managed to achieve by the end of the first Guardians movie. In aiding the Avengers defeat Thanos, Drax finally laid his feud to rest. 2. Rocket has a dark past with the High Evolutionary As Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is set to focus mostly on Rocket's character, it is worth noting that his dark past with the High Evolutionary, the film will feature the Marvel Comics villain as an antagonist, linking to Rocket's origins in the MCU. In the first Guardians, Quill notices Rocket's cybernetic enhancements before Rocket, later in the film, states that he never asked to be made. The third Guardians will detail Rocket's origin and how he was created and abused by the High Evolutionary. 3. Groot was reborn in Guardians Volume 1 one of the most interesting plot elements of the Guardians centers on Groot and the fact that they have actually been two separate versions of the character in the MCU. At the end of Guardians Volume 1, Groot sacrifices himself to save his found family. Rocket then regrows Groot, who eventually became Baby Groot, Teenage Groot, and Young Adult Groot in Guardians 2, Avengers 3 and 4, and Guardians 3 respectively. After Guardians 1, Groot was reborn with new memories and a new personality, meaning the original Groot was killed in the first film. 4. Drax and Mantis have formed a close bond since Guardians Volume 2. Aside from the new familial bond shared with Quill, Mantis is closest to Drax out of the other Guardians. Since Volume 2, Drax and Mantis have been shown to form a close bond, from their humorous antics and heartwarming bonding in the second film to the same that occurred in the Avengers film and the Holiday Special, Drax and Mantis's dynamic will likely be showcased heavily in the Guardians Volume 3, too. 5. The Guardians rebuilt Nowhere as their home base after Endgame Another story element revealed about the team during the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special was that their home base is now on Nowhere. Nowhere used to serve as a mining facility that housed seedy businesses and establishments owned by the Collector. After Thanos was defeated, the Guardians bought Nowhere from the Collector and began rebuilding it, allowing it to function as their headquarters. This location will likely be featured heavily in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 as well. 6. The Sovereign have sent Adam Warlock for revenge against the Guardians. Based on the marketing for the film, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 will pay off the end credit sequence of Volume 2. At the end of that film, the leader of the Sovereign race, Aisha, vowed revenge against the Guardians for the latter stealing treasure from her people. This led the Sovereign to create a new being named Adam who would be the next stage in their evolution. This character, Adam Warlock from Marvel Comics, will serve as one of the primary antagonists for Guardians of the Galaxy 3, played by Will Poulter. 7. The Guardians have new members in Cosmo and Kraglin. Aside from the core Guardians members of Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, Mantis, Rocket, Groot, and Nebula, the team has two new members for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. 
These come in the form of Cosmo and Craglin. Beginning with the latter, Craglin was a member of the Ravagers who helped raise Quill and joined the team after the death of Yondu in Volume 2. Cosmo, on the other hand, is a telepathic dog who was imprisoned by the Collector, who was freed by the Guardians upon their possession of nowhere. 8. Nebula and Rocket worked with the Avengers during the blip. Finally, one of the last elements of the Guardians' past that could be important to Volume 3 is that Rocket and Nebula survived Thanos' snap. At the end of Infinity War, Thanos used the Infinity Gauntlet to erase half of all life in the universe, with Rocket and Nebula being the only two surviving members of the Guardians. This led the duo to work closely with the Avengers during the five-year-long blip before eventually reviving the other Guardian members in Endgame. This history with Avengers could serve as a plot point in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3, especially given the film's focus on Rocket. 9. Star-Lord was taken from Earth as a child When concerning Star-Lord or Peter Quill, one of the main things to know about his character is that he was born on Earth. In the first Guardians of the Galaxy, Quill was shown in 1988 as a child of Meredith Quill, who is sadly dying of cancer. After Meredith passes, Peter runs out into the Missouri wilderness, only to be captured by an alien ship led by Yondu Udonta. Yondu was hired to bring Quill to the latter's father, but chose to keep him due to the attachment they formed. Since then, Star-Lord only returned to Earth once in Avengers Endgame, otherwise spending the rest of his life among the stars. 10. Gamora is a 2014 version of herself. The main plot point that will be important to Gamora's character in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 is that she is a version of herself from an alternate timeline. In Avengers Infinity War, the Gamora introduced in Guardians Vol. 1 was killed by her father Thanos. Avengers Endgame then introduced a new version of Gamora from 2014 before she met Peter or the other Guardians. This version of Gamora traveled to the present to be reunited with the Guardians, only without any memory of who they are or their connection to her. This version of Gamora will be the one centered on in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3. Based on the marketing for the film, it is likely much of the story will center on Quill attempting to reignite his relationship with Gamora, despite not knowing who he is other than her alternate self was in love with him. This will likely serve as the basis for Gamora and Quill's emotional arc in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 as a way to end her character's journey. Bonus: Nebula Wars Tortured by Her Father Thanos Gamora's sister, Nebula, will also be a part of the Guardians in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3. Nebula began as a ruthless warrior, dedicated to earning Thanos' approval by any means necessary. In the first film, Nebula served Ronin and as a result, helping the latter to obtain the Power Stone and aiding his attempt to destroy Xandar. However, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 greatly humanized Nebula, revealing that her yearning for her father's approval comes from the years of abuse and torture he inflicted on her due to her not being as strong or capable as Gamora. This led Gamora and Nebula to reconcile, something heavily featured in Avengers Infinity Wars and Avengers Endgame. Similar to Quill, it is likely some of Nebula's emotional arc in Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will incorporate her attempts to reconnect with Gamora as she and Nebula were not particularly close in 2014. Also, Nebula's journey could include how she feels now that her father has been defeated, after the years of trauma she suffered at Thanos' hands prior to the Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3. That was all from us today for this video, folks. See you in the next one.